fight it out. Mid ramp. So yeah, the, in the middle of uh, the King of Fighters episodes. Yep. And that's okay. Are we on? Yes. My okay. My nice fancy uh, episode cuts. Yep. We're professional. Kind of. Mm -hmm. By which I mean we are not in the least, and that's okay. Like that's a, this, is, this slightly fancy shit is about the best you're gonna get. I mean, it's better than I can do right now. Um, so. Basically, that was that was one match. So, you know, first of all, he's done one dumb thing. So now, now he, uh, basically, uh, now that Chomp has beaten uh, Gargano with both ha with, with his hands cuffed, he decides he's going to go after the champion for his title. So he's challenging uh, Alistair Black for the title, and they have this match on just a weekly episode of NXT. You know, they're fighting back and forth. You know, it's it's a decent enough match, and at one point. Uh, the ref gets knocked out, Alistair's knocked out, Champa goes to grab the title belt to smack Alistair with it. Gargano shows up and fights, you know, and tussles with uh, Champa for a bit. And uh, he tries to hit Champa with the belt. He misses, he knocks out Alistair Black, Champa pins him, one, two, three. Champa is now the champ. Johnny Gargano is the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. God, fucking Abigail. Yep. I'm just like looking at the size compared to our Mika, and it's like, Jesus. Yeah. Really compared to pretty much anybody on the roster at this point. Yeah. At this, although, really, like, the size contrast is immense with, well, I guess, any, any of the female characters, really. Yep. And his reach is also pretty ridiculous. Which is not surprising given he's gigantic, but you know. Ugh, boy. I really enjoy um, the dumb car stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do I do I do really like his overall attitude, it's nice. Um so then tonight then last uh, Saturday uh, they had one more match. They had a, a title match. It was really going to have Alistair Black in it, uh, but Alistair got injured uh, in a set, in a, you know, a house show, so he uh, had to be taken off, uh, and it was just two of them. So it was a last man standing match. So basically, they just, just like they usually do, they beat each other all over the place, pillar to post, as you, as you, as you'd say. Um, Hmm. Oh. That's bad. Not quite as bad as it could have been. Yep. So, you know, they're fighting each other, they're beating each other up, they're doing all this stuff. Uh, at one point, uh, Champa tries to introduce the cuffs and tries to get Gargano. He messes up. Gargano manages to get him cuffed at least on one arm. And so he starts dragging him all over the ring. He re he recreates Champa's <laughs> heel turn on him. What Champa did was he tossed him into the Tron, you know, tossed him into the stage, and and basically, you know, Gargano went back to that and, and did that. And so they're fighting on the stage. Champa's all knocked over. Uh, he ends up handcuffing Champa to, uh, you know, an end of the stage. Like so, he's like right on the edge of the stage, right? Like he's like right. On the on the end of you know you know where where, the, where it cuts off, so they're, you know they're fighting each other. Uh, Gargano goes for a knee strike. Like he takes his padding, you know, he takes his knee pad off. He's gonna hit Gargano, you know, Champa with a with an with his unprotected knee. He goes running for it. He hits Champa, and then he goes careening off of the edge of the stage, messes up his knee. So he's on the ground. He can't get up. The ref is counting both of them out. And Champa kind of rolls over and right off of the stage just enough to, to land on his feet. And at the end, you know, at the end of the count, Champa's a winner again. <laughs> All Johnny had to do was let him sit there and let the ref count him out. Instead, yeah, he had to go revenge and... and 
he's the dumbest motherfucker on the face of the planet. <laughs> Also, I gotta it say just, the, the fact that uh, Abigail was win quote for Armika is like, you could like tone it down, just saying. Yep. It is, I feel it's ironic. Yep. I'm still kind of confused about why they gave Cody a projectile, like a real one, instead of a rock. I guess because he's a little more refined now, maybe? I don't know. Either that or they're like channeling a mighty final fight. This is the only play other time he's had a projectile. Maybe. Ah yes, we'll use a the NES kind of parody game as a uh as a reference. As you do. I have no idea what his super is. I th I believe it is double quarter circle kick. Okay. I can't help but feel even if I if I got Cody's uh, nostalgia outfit, it would be kind of weird seeing him do all like the weird mare stuff with his final fight costume. Yeah. I don't know how you deal with that. Like Guile combing his hat. <laughs> It's not the kick. I thought it was. Hmm. You know, it says nostalgia costume, but I'm pretty sure Buki's uh, original costume didn't have a huge scarf. No. It's probably going to be close, but not quite. Unless you're Akuma or Alex. Oh, it is, it's punch. Oh. But it's not going to matter. Why was, it, why was I thinking kick? Maybe that was just because I was thinking of, uh, ruffian kick. Is this how you treat your constituents? <laughs> the answer is yes. This is exactly how Cody treats his constituents. Makes sense to me. It's how Hagar treated his constituents. <laughs> when they were breaking the law. Why would Cody law? be any different? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you win. Cody's just out there picking fights for shits and giggles. Mm-hmm. Buki, you need to like chill the fuck out. <laughs> You're like 15 or something. I don't, I don't know. How old even is she now? I think during Street Fighter 3 she was like 16, 17. I know she wasn't an adult because she was still in high school. God forbid anybody be out of high school. Mm -hmm. Not allowed. Okay. So, on Sunday for SummerSlam, WWE managed something absolutely miraculous. They managed to have a main event with Brock and Roman in it that didn't get completely booed out of the building. I, I, I'm still kind of in awe of how they managed that. Um... Basically, what they did was they said, "Okay, so you have the Money in the Bank briefcase. Braun has this. The, another guy that everybody likes, Braun Strowman, has Money in the Bank briefcase." Um, and what they did was they started the match with Roman and Brock. Braun came out and basically said that he was going to to challenge whoever won it and cash in his briefcase. 
He's like, I got next. So he just kind of hung out ringside while this was going on. So, you know, Rock and Roman get to it. Uh, really fast-paced stuff more than they usually do. Uh, but at one point, Roman went for a spear, and Rock dodged him. Roman went out the ring, and he hit Braun, knocked him over. Um, so then... Brock goes out after Roman, but instead of going after Roman, he goes after Braun instead. He beats up, you know, Brock, you know, br you know, beats up Braun, hits him with it with his finisher on the floor. Then he grabs the briefcase and just starts beating Braun over the head with it. <laughs> just, just savages all get out. Um, and I think I think he also got a chair and hit Braun a few times with that too, or Roman or somebody. Um, so. He grabs a briefcase and just flings it over, over at the stage. Just, just really nilly. Um, so, Rock got back in the ring. Meanwhile, Roman's recovered. And he hits Brock with another spear, pins him, wins the match. So, Braun is knocked out. He doesn't get to catch the, the briefcase in. And Roman is finally beat Brock for the Universal t Championship. And the crowd did not totally shit over it like they usually do. Uh, because they were expecting Brock Braun to cash in and were completely blindsided by the fact that he didn't. It is kind of so weird then, that he wouldn't. Hmm? It is kind of weird that he wouldn't. Well, well, that, that kind of feeds into what they did tonight. Uh, so, because he didn't cash the briefcase in, he had it for tonight, and that became a factor. So, Roman came out and basically immediately challenged uh, Finn Balor, who notably was the first person to have that title, he won it the night that they introduced it, but then he had to give it up the night after because he was injured. Um, so, you know, he, he gets the match with Finn, and Braun basically walks up to Finn and says, I'm going to do like I did last night. I'm, you know, I'm going to... He basically, his thing is he doesn't want to just sneak up on whoever he's going to cash it in on. He wants to do it to their face. So he intends to basically just be present when he's going to cash it in and do it when he's ready. Um, so he basically tells Finn that's what he's going to do. He just wishes Finn good luck and he leaves. So Roman and Finn's match is the main event. Um, they're going back and forth for a little bit. About partway through the match, uh, Braun shows up. He comes out and he just kind of hangs out at ringside. Roman gets distracted. Finn knocks him over, goes for his finisher, which is a jump off the top rope. Uh, basically just pounds his feet into the person's sternum pretty much from the top mm. rope. Um, so he's on the top, you know, he's on the top of the turnbuckle ready to, to hit this move, but he gets distracted looking at Braun. Roman knocks him off the top, uh, you know, and hits him with another spear and finishes the match. So Braun goes in, you know, Roman is still getting up, you know, recovering from the match and Braun just kind of waits for a second. Then kicks him over and goes to cash in, uh, his briefcase. Just as he's cashing in the briefcase, uh... Basically, Roman's other two teammates uh, from the group that he used to be in called The Shield, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, show up. Their music hits. They all come out, and they just wail on Braun Strowman. And they, you know, they, they, that, that's how they finish the, finish the show. Which was just like, basically, every, anybody who's actually watching wrestling knows that that was absolutely bonkers what just happened. Uh because the shield had actually the all three members one of them was injured and had just come back like a week ago and they just all of a sudden come out to help roman just out of the blue so it was just a really crazy thing that happened like they we, we got the cash in but then we didn't get the cash in because the shield beat him up so we don't know if braun actually cashed it in because the bell never rung so he might still have the thing for all we know But yeah, it was it was a fun couple of nights. I kind of wish I actually like paid attention to wrestling, so yeah. I could appreciate this more. <laughs> Fair enough. But I feel like I already have like enough shit I do. All these video games I have that I'm not playing. <laughs> I mean, they have ways that you can easily catch up on this stuff. Like, uh, they literally have a show where 
they have some matches on it, but it's only like an hour long, and then they just recap everything. And then if you watch a pay-per-view, they recap everything anyway, any, you know, at that point. What am I doing my catch-up? I'm talking to you. <laughs> Fair enough. But it's a good time to watch it if you ever got into it, though. I would say that much. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> okay. Womp womp. Oh. Oh. I, I shouldn't have been that close on wake up. When I wake up, I like the super. <laughs> That's how you start your day. Also, that is a very shiny outfit. Yeah, like all apparently all the EX wants me in fucking shiny as shit. I'm not complaining. Here you go. You unlocked a co color costume color from the gotcha. It's gaudy as gaudy as hell. It's garish. <laughs> I actually like that outfit. It's just really shiny. Also, I'm next, marveling at it. Next time on Bro vs. Bro, more shiny, shiny outfits in the middle of the road. <laughs>